February 26, 2019, school board special meeting will come to order. Uh, we had just had a meeting, so I dispensed with the invocation. We've already had an invocation this morning. Um, the agenda item is approval of resolution 19-12, designating and commissioning school safety officers and establishing the school board of Clay County, Florida, Clay County, Florida Police Department. Um, I'll entertain a motion. Oh, and if it, did anyone fill out any cards? If you do want to address the audience, we certainly want to hear from you. I don't know. I guess saw a couple of people pull them out. I don't think I'll get anybody. You'll, you'll each be given three minutes to speak, and we'll try to stick to that timeline. Um, but we do want to. Does anyone else want to fill out a card? They're over here on the table. And if you'll just hand them in. Did anybody make a motion on that? Mm -hmm. Can I make a motion? Okay. Um, I'll entertain the cards. Do you want to get a motion for I think we have to do the cards before we do it. We do. We're going to do the cards before we can take the motion and a second on it. Um, Patricia Lee. Yes. Um, the mic is right over here. If you would state your name and address for the record, and then uh, you're invited to speak for three minutes. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, the name is Patricia Lee. I'm a resident of Eagle Harbor. Uh, 2308 Bridgewater Court. Uh, so my question is, and I am new to this, so I'm just catching up. Uh, I'd like to understand the rationale for having a separate police department, as I understand it. I'm sorry. The superintendent sorry. was talking to me, and I didn't hear your sorry. question. I'm sorry. Uh, what's the rationale for the net new police department? Okay. We don't do questions and answers. Uh, you have three minutes to speak. And okay. Okay, so I uh, do have concerns about the rationale for this newly forming police department. Um, as a citizen, as well as a parent of children in the school district, uh, my concern has to do with the ability for a net new police department to be able to properly provide the security to our children in our school district. We have an existing police force trained with years of professional experience, organized, embedded well within the city's organizations, why do we have to some, have something that new? And also, if you are doing that, what resources do you have that can provide as equivalent and as competent a set of resources as what already exists today? My understanding is you've already taken additional taxes to fund this, but rather than siphon it off to create a new organization, why not just top off for the existing if we're missing resources? And also, uh, if, as I understand it, it's not broken, so what are we trying to fix? Okay, thank you. <coughs> Next is Nancy Powell. Good morning. Uh, Nancy Howell, um, with, um, in the Fleming Island Plantation, 1606 Majestic View Lane in Fleming Island. I'm extremely concerned, <clears throat> not that this is a bad decision or not, because I think we're rushing it. I think that this decision has been presented in January, and all the options, and then decided one month later. How is it possible for everybody to make an informed decision that way? And, and it's not just you guys that need, to make th that need to accept this. You're talking about all of Clay County, who hired and who um, voted everybody into these positions that are making these decisions. Um, I just feel that we don't know enough about it to know that you're, you actually put the time in to um, research this information. You're talking about creating an entire new police department with a new chief, new lieutenant, training officers, <coughs> dispatchers. We already have that. So how is that more cost effective than just hiring the officers from our current police department? Why? And, and, and not in, in addition to having to purchase all these new vehicles and all the capital investment that's going to have to happen that we already have here in Clay County. So now not just for the school board, you're talking about the school board hiring and having using the, the millage money that we had um, approved, but now on the, on the flip side, you're talking about the 
police department having all these officers that that they don't they're not in the schools anymore they're going to have to absorb that cost again and ask for more budget to pay for the officers that are already out there that are now not being used in the school unless for some reason they decide to give up their pension and and come get hired by the Clay County School Department so I don't understand why this is being rushed and so that was what I would ask before you make any approval and I don't even think there should be an approval today a decision I think there needs to be more discussion be, and I think it would also be beneficial to have a discussion more like a town meeting with more of the residents of Clay County to get everybody on board so you don't have people against everything you're deciding today which is really a big reason why we voted people out last time or voted for a different superintendent because we didn't like what the last superintendent was doing and the way they were taking us. So I think that's just something you guys need to think about. It's not just about what the five of you were doing, six of you were doing. This is about all of Clay County. And I think you haven't taken that into consideration. Thank you. Okay. The next speaker. Oh. I noticed there were some <coughs> that just came in. The cards are over here if you want to fill out a card for your three-minute speech. Uh, next is Brenda or Brandy or Okay, I'm going to pass out, but I'm going to say <laughs> um, I'm Brandy Orr, and um, I'm in Black Creek at Eagle Harbor. It's 1917 Salt Creek Drive. Um, I couldn't sit at home this morning and just let this go. Um, I don't know a lot about it. I've um, seen what I've read on, seen on the news and Sheriff Daniel's interview, and I just don't understand the rush on this. We take our time making big life decisions, and I don't feel like you guys have taken your time with this. I don't feel like you're doing what the parents want. I feel like you think you're making the best decision, but it's, it's, it's rushed. I mean, the one thing that we cannot mess up on is our kids and the safety of our kids. And I feel like it's, even if this is the decision you decide to go forth with later on, why do it now? Why not just wait, get some more information, I mean, Sheriff Daniels is poised and ready to continue. And I think as parents, we, we all welcome that. I, I sit at home, and I go, my husband works, and, and we are blessed to have a sheriff and a police force, local, county, whatever, that is willing to step up and do what they've done. Our kids love these guys. They love our kids. I feel like if the shooter comes in the school, they're going to react appropriately. They're not going to run. You know, and I don't know that setting up a police force in six months, that you're going to get the same thing. What you're going to get is a bunch of angry parents that are going to start moving their kids elsewhere. You're going to start losing money. You're going to get voted out. And it's just, it's, it's not good. I mean, I beg you, please think of the safety of our kids. God forbid something happen. It is on your back. You are responsible for this. I, I, don't, I don't want that. I don't think any parent in here wants that. <coughs> a lot more notes, but I, I, I think I've said it all. Okay, thank you. Uh, next is Demetra Copeland. Good morning. Um, I live in Lake Asbury, 32, excuse me, Demetra Copeland, uh, 3263 Chadbourne Drive. Um, I agree with what's been said so far. Um, this is completely rushed. Um, looking back at your meeting last year, April of last year, there was talk of the BCC providing funding. Um, this option was voted by all of you as a no. This should not be happening. And now here we are a year later after we've given our money saying, okay, yes, we want SROs. It was our understanding though, because not in a million years did we think that you guys would come up with some bright idea to create your own police department. In our minds, it was going to be our current police officers who the community has grown to have tremendous respect for, who I think our children need to continue to have that respect for. 
and to have that relationship grow. Um, Ms. Gailhausen, I know in the school board meeting you made a comparison to mall cops, and that's exactly what I think will happen. These officers are going to be viewed as less than, and therefore not respected to the degree that the Sheriff's Office or the Green Cove or the Orange Park Police Department would be. You're putting our children in danger by doing this. You're opening the door for huge liability and lawsuits. There's factors in here that I don't think y'all have considered at all. What about insurance? How's that going to work? Not, not benefits, but liability and insurance. What happens when we have more schools and therefore we need more officers? You guys brought up the fact that we might need more officers in schools, more than just one. Where's, where's the numbers for all that? You all have not considered all of the numbers. And the numbers from last year, April, compared to this year, those aren't adding up either. They're not the same. So where are these numbers coming from? Mr. Davis, you said in the school board meeting that you were using the Clay County Sheriff's Office numbers for this year, that you didn't get new numbers of what it would cost for future years. And yet you looked at Sheriff Daniels in the audience, and at no point did you say, well, you know, would you like to provide us with some more numbers? School board, at no point did you guys say, you know what, let's take a step back and get some more numbers, get some more information, get some more answers. Who are these officers going to be? Our sheriff's office, neighboring sheriff's office, are short-staffed. Where are you going to find these police officers who are qualified? We don't want people in our schools that the academy doesn't want, the sheriff's offices of elsewhere don't want. We don't want a bunch of retirees either who are going to be quickly leaving because they're tired of it, who are not going to be in it, as involved in the schools as they've been, as you've been saying they've been. Your time, so thank you. <laughs> thank you. And uh, next is Brian Weigel. 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 Yes. Excuse me. Latecomers, if you filled out a card, please hand it in from for three minutes. My name is Brian Weigel. I live at 1071 Merlin Point in Middleburg, Florida. Uh, first of all, I want to address the, the millage rate increase. I believe that uh, when the taxpayers voted for it, um, they were under the assumption that there were going to be more sworn officers in the school. I believe, uh, Ms. Stutter, you made the comment to media that that's what was going to happen, that that would allow for more money to be generated to bring in more resource <coughs> officers, comma, sworn deputies. And now here we are developing our own police force. I know folks in here have questions on why are we doing this, you know, taking such a quick action and getting this done. I think if we go back and look, uh, if anybody listens to the, uh, the minutes from the last meeting, it's quite apparent uh, from some of the board members and what they spoke that uh, I think they referred to it as rip the Band-Aid off to save $2 million. So... In essence, we're going to try to save $2 million and put our, our children and students in our county in potential jeopardy of having undertrained officers uh, to protect them on a daily basis. I don't think this is the right route to go. Um, I think that all the taxpayers were deceived. Um, the last meeting, board members said yes, they, they spoke to, to different people about it prior to the meeting, last meeting. Um, I highly doubt that you really spoke to a large amount of taxpayers within the community that really give you a, a good idea on what everybody was thinking. So, I mean, I'm just guessing, let's say you spoke to 100 people, each person up there, that's 500. Really, what percentage is that of the taxpayers in this overall community? So I think you are making a grave mistake. Um, I feel bad for the new sworn-in sheriff because if he fails, uh, he's literally going to be run out of town, along with some of the other board members out there that have voted to push this through quickly. I don't disagree with having a police department um, long-term eventually, but I think you're moving too quick with it, and obviously everybody in here is saying the same thing. So I ask that you please reconsider starting this next fall. Thank you. The next speaker is Bob Tynich. Uh, 
Uh, my name is Bob Turnage. I live at uh, 2820 Windermere Court, Middleburg, Florida. Uh, I'm going to try to address this a little differently than maybe some of the other folks have. In the first place, as a business owner and a property owner in Clay County, I feel like we were all conned into a tax here. You know, most of us, if you look at it, you'll see that you had estimates from the Sheriff's Department to take care of the school systems by putting the necessary deputies and the resources in the schools that were necessary to take care of our children. And I assure you today that you can start any kind of bureaucracy that you want in the school system. And every time that you have something that goes wrong, you're going to dial 911. You're not going to call over to the next school and send a couple of the guys over here to help us. We need the Clay County Sheriff's Department. We need the Green Coat Springs Police Department or Orange Park or whatever. And so in the process of doing it, what you're doing is you're creating a bureaucracy now that when this tax is supposed to expire, will not expire because it will be the rule that you need all that money to maintain this bureaucracy that you've created within the school system that will not work. And as a taxpayer in Clay County, I don't like the fact that you're doing this to me. Thank you. The next speaker is Russell Bennis. State your name and address for Russell Bennis, 1405 Manatee Cove Drive, that you guys held this meeting at this hour knowing the small outcome that we would have. Shame on all of you. Exactly. Because you guys yes. knew exactly what you were doing. I know a little bit about politics, and you guys played a good card. Thank you. Okay. That's all the, oh, excuse me, one more card. Uh, Dustin Elrod. If you would state your name and address for the record. Dustin Elrod, 3846, State Road 16 West, Grand Coast Springs, Florida, 32043. Uh, all of y'all sitting there today were on a ballot, and I think you need to strongly consider putting this on a ballot because the majority of this room and the parents are against it. Just to save yourself a lot of hassle in the future, this needs to be on a ballot. It needs to be postponed. You need to wait. You're making a bad decision here, and it's obvious. Uh, I have a few concerns here to take up my three minutes. What do you do while you have your school officers during school hours when it's not school hours? You call 911. You're not going to pay your school officers to be at the school 24 hours a day when there's vandalism or anything else that may happen at a school. What caliber, is my next question, of people are you going to find to sustain a job that pays $25,000 a year? If, you, if you're asking these people to be at the school 24 hours a day, they're not going to do it for $25,000 a year. And the minimal insurance that the school board has. That's just a, 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 few, a few of the concerns. So I, I think you really, really need to strongly consider postponing it. Put it on the ballot just as you were elected. The officials, the chief, the police chief, or whoever it's going to be, that needs to be on the ballot as well. Y'all should not have the power to make this decision today. This needs to be a, a, a county citizen decision. Thank you. Okay. That completes all of our cards. I'll entertain a motion. The agenda item is to approve a resolution. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. I'll move the problem. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Kirikis, a second by Ms. Uh, Bullock. Any discussion? All those in favor, I'll indicate I'd by... I'd like to discuss. All right. Um, it's no secret how I feel about what the appropriate way forward is. Could you speak up? Sorry. Oh, it's hard for... Yes. Um, is there a mic anywhere that we could give her? It's, I'll, I'll speak about it. Okay. At our, at our meeting earlier this month, I voiced that my preference was that we, we um, elect to have the sheriff's deputies cover our schools and um, Green Cove Police and Orange Park Police within their jurisdictions. That was my preference at the meeting. That continues to be my preference today. Um, 
we had the conversation at the meeting and several motions to try to move forward from here, but never ever was I comfortable with starting our own police force in the fall of this year. Um, I agree with the comments that have been made today, and um, I would implore my other board members to reconsider um, postponing this. It's not a, I, I think we're hearing, it's not a hard no, um, but I think that, it's, and the superintendent has even voiced that this is a large elephant to eat in six months. I mean, it's um, to have a fully effective um, police force built by the school district ready to go when school starts in August, um, that's a big hurdle to jump. And I think that's part of this meeting in itself is evidence of the fact that this is rushed. I mean, we had to call a special meeting to approve a resolution that needs to go in because we haven't even turned in the application to the department or the Department of Law Enforcement yet um, to even get their approval to start a police force for our schools. So um, I, I agree, I don't know what the rush is, um, I understand that, that this is a financial decision with financial impact. Um, what we have from the sheriff are hard numbers. They're not going to change. What we have, as far as our numbers, are predictions. Um, and, you know, I don't how many of you have ever made a financial decision and it cost exactly what you projected it was going to cost? So when we're squabbling about how much money it's going to, to cost us to have our own police force versus letting the sheriff's department do it, um, you know, we're talking about fluid numbers. So on our end, not on the sheriff's end. So I, my request again is that we slow this down, um, at least for the next school year. We've heard a lot of the why not, but tell us the why so, that you're no, saying that you want to do. Ma'am, we don't uh, entertain we don't comments for the audience at this point. This is now it's back up to the board. Thank you. I want Ladies, them protecting my community. kids right there. That's who I want protecting my exactly. kids. Exactly. Those men right there. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Any other discussion? Ms. Stoddard, I'd like to say something. Okay, Ms. Stoddard. A year ago, we did not have any protection in our elementary schools. A year ago, we did not have anyone in our junior highs. Or we had just added them back, perhaps. And unfortunately, over the years, we have had to look at the cost. Of, of putting SROs um, in all of our schools. You look at the, the old DARE programs, you look at all of the programs that have gone to the wayside because of the cost. We went to the millage, we requested the millage for school safety and security. A year later, we have SROs in our high schools and our junior highs. These gentlemen will continue. And I was not quite with Ms. Gilhouse, and we had different, different views. My hope was that we could continue with the program that we currently have for the next year. Since then, I've learned that that wouldn't be an option either. And one of the reasons being that the guardians would have to come out of the elementary schools. Um, so there would be additional cost to the sheriff's office for those cars, for those personnel, for the people. I was hesitant to change my mind, I suppose you could say, to go to the decision that we made. I chose to vote for that knowing that we were not getting mall cops that we're not getting second-hand police officers. We are getting personnel who are trained through all of the sources that the school just that the sheriff's office, the Green Cove Springs Police Department, and the Orange Park Police Department are going to have the trains, trainings. Excuse me. Um, I'm seeing some people say no. I've not been told that differently. I've been told that, yes, we are getting 
certified police what? officer. Oh, train them. Train them. Your no training comments facility. from the audience, please. How can you say so, that without us asking everybody? Can I say that? Can I, can I, can I, can, can right. I say something? I'm sorry from the Hold chair. Please. Trust me, I know that this is extremely emotional, and I'm, I'm, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful of this, but the way that these meetings are operated, and Addison did, Davis didn't create this operation of the meetings, but everywhere across the state, the, this board, you know, in this interaction is for the board to have discussions and not for questions to be posed by the audience. So please know that we're not trying to be disrespectful in this manner. We appreciate you coming and, and providing your hearts and what you believe is best for this community, but there can't be a back and forth, so I'm, I'm sorry. I will be outside afterwards if you want to ask me any questions related to this. I will personally, I'll give you my cell phone number to have those conversations, okay? So I, I want to say I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but this has to happen. The, and this is the formalities of the board. We either. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Ms. Bowen, would, would you like to continue? I'm, I'm fine. Okay. Any other uh, discussion from the board? Well, first of all, you know, when we talk about school safety, that's my number one priority, and I'm sure it's everybody on this board, and it's all worth never in a million years did any of us probably imagine that someday our schools would have an all armed officer walking through them. Uh, it's definitely a challenging thing that we're doing. But let me assure you, I have a granddaughter at Ridgeview High School. I would never do anything to put her or any of your children in, in danger. Um, many of the SROs that we're referring to are actually going to be probably the same SROs if they apply, which many of them have already indicated they were interested in coming to the school district. Um, so that, that's a, certainly a factor. The other thing is, I think someone asked about 24-7. Well, actually, in their job description, they are available to us. So we can call upon them if there's a... Uh, when I was a principal at Keystone Heights High School, there were three days out of the whole time I was there that I was not called at night. That I did not get a phone call. A door's unlocked. There's a kid with a skateboard. A thousand things. You know, in fact, the last day when I retired, I said, they called me that night, and I said, let me give you the new principal's phone number. But, I mean, those kinds of things, we will be able to call those officers. After school events that we currently pay for, we will not have to pay for those because they'll be factored into all of that. Uh, we pay $30 an hour to have a deputy come to an after school event. An hour. And so, you know, you imagine a ball game that Keystone goes to Newberry or wherever. It's a lot of hours, so that also adds up. So, you know, I definitely think that we're going to put the main purpose is school safety. We're going to be able to put school resource officers, not school safety officers, in our, all of our elementary schools. So that is 26 of them. And I know that typically an event happens at a junior high or high school, but at elementary school, they're the most vulnerable children. Imagine a five-year-old, day three, and something happens. Do they know where to run, where to go? Where? No, they don't. They have to have as much support as possible. Our high schools, those students typically know where to run. They know where the places are. They know all the things that they are supposed to do as an individual. Little children don't do that. We're going to have 26 school resource officers. The difference uh, in a school resource officer and a school safety officer, school resource officer, my understanding is, they can arrest, they can detain, they can search. The school, uh, the SSROs can't do that. Anyway, that's uh, just kind of my comments on that. And, and I, I appreciate you all coming out here today and sharing your views and opinions. I know many of you have sent us emails, and so um, we're aware that there's a um, discussion taking place in the community. I, for one, am really excited about the district moving forward in this direction, and I have been from the beginning when it was presented to us. Nobody else. I'm sorry. I'm speaking. Um, I have nothing but the utmost respect and faith in our staff, our superintendent, and the person being hired as our chief of police to do the best job, provide us with extremely well-trained officers, not mall cops. I find that very insulting that you would refer to them as mall cops. They will be trained and certified just like the Clay County Sheriff's Office deputies are. I believe that we will have safety as our number one priority and by creating a police force for the school district, we will also have 
cost savings. Over the first two years, we're going to save $2 million that we won't have to be paying to the Clay County Sheriff's Office because we'll be able to do it internally. We'll also <coughs> save an additional $85,000 a year, as Mrs. Bullock said, by having our deputies handle all of our um, extracurricular activities. They are $30, $33 an hour, three hour minimum, so we're paying $99 an evening for each deputy that's at a football game. So we'll have cost savings there, but we'll have um, the ability to have an officer, a school resource officer at every one of our schools. And then what this board voted for was to continue with our school safety officers for the remainder of the 1920, 1919, 1920 school year and readdress it next year, probably at this time. Unfortunately, the sheriff has sent a letter to the board or the superintendent saying that as of October 1, he will be decertifying all of our school safety officers. So those large schools that we'd like to have a school resource officer and a school safety officer at, we may not have that ability to do that. And that's on the sheriff. It's not on the school board. The school board has voted to keep them and maintain them. So I'm excited for moving forward. I trust our superintendent and staff to provide us with the best. I know that the liability insurance will be increased. They've already looked into it. Your concerns are heard, and I would advise you to reach out after the meeting, talk with the superintendent. He will talk to you about it. So um, thank you for coming today. And I'm sorry if we're not all in agreement with what you want and what the board sees as our responsibility to the citizens and the children of Clay County. Thank you. Okay. I think the thing that is the most frustrating to me is the uh, misinformation, uh, incorrect information that has been given to you people. I was looking at your faces. You're all here because you're concerned parents, you're concerned citizens, and I get it. But, and I'm not faulting you for the way that you believe, but there are, it is so important yeah. that we um, clarify some of the incorrect information that y'all have been given. Uh, I, a lot of the things <coughs> that have been said are just simply not true. But I have asked the superintendent uh, and expressed my desire to get the truth out so that you can understand and every other parent and citizen in Clay County can understand the truth. You know, the school board may not be perfect, the sheriff's office may not be perfect. Uh, my desire in my years on the school board, and, uh, and for the most part it has been so, that we work collegially, uh, the, the uh, Board of County Commissioners, the Sheriff's Office, the school system, for the good of Clay County. For all of us, we're, we're all citizens, taxpayers, parents. We must try to work together, hand in hand, all working towards the betterment of Clay County. That's very important to me. And, and because of the misstatements and untruths, I'm alarmed because I know you're good people, but there are some things that y'all do not understand. And so, um, well, as, so you may know, as you may know, as you may know, excuse me, you're out of order. As you may know, the superintendent is having a press conference today at noon. Really? And a lot of these questions that you had, it'll be at Fleming Island High School in the lobby at the entrance to the high school. Correct? Mr. David? Yes, ma'am. A lot of the uh, concerns and statements that have been made, uh, uh, I'm sure he is going to clarify that. He has offered to be outside after this meeting. I certainly, and I'm sure the board members will be glad to try to, to clarify some of the things. Uh, but the animosity and the um, emails with such misinformation, I've given up on trying to 
respond to them because okay. you would have to spend two days trying to answer the questions. So hopefully today we can get a lot of things. Now look at this disgusted man here. I'm trying to reach out. Excuse to me. You. Uh, Excuse me. I want to tell you. I want to. You're out of order. A one-way conversation here. Yeah. Where's the That's officer? We didn't involved. come in here as citizen officer. representatives okay. to have someone talk to us that way. So there's <laughs> office or not? Is there a? Do we have an officer in here? Um, if we have any more disruptions, I'm going to ask you to please remove the person from the audience. This is for the board to discuss. It is not audience participation at this point. So I am giving fair warning uh, as required by law. If you speak out again, I will ask that you be removed. That is, we have to conduct an orderly meeting, so please. Um, I do want to tell you this. Um, Friday before last, I got a, uh, two phone calls from the sheriff. He expressed to me that he was en route uh, on the first call, he was en route to have a meeting with the superintendent. He expressed to me how he too wanted to work as a, a two collegial agencies, that he uh, would do whatever he could to help us in our quest for safety for the kids. I said, great. I said, one thing that would help is if you would look at your numbers and sharpen your pencil. If it would just, if you could just help us a little, please. He said, I'm going to get with my financial officer, and then we'll get back with, I said, we'll get back with the superintendent. It was the, the following Thursday night, we finally got some information. Not one nickel had changed off of, off of what his finance officer had given us to use. Not one nickel had changed. And in addition, as Ms. Kirk has stated, he's not uh, going to uh, help us with the Guardian program. And I do want to make one clarification that I had gotten confused on over the years, and I want to make sure we start off on this. It's my understanding that in the state law, these officers are called school safety officers. In, in Clay County, we call them SROs, school resource officers. A school resource officer and a school safety officer are one and the same. But in Clay County, we have started referring to guardians as SSO, school safety officers. We have SSOs the same as SROs. Those are the trained deputies, just like we have right now. If we set up our own, when we set up our own police department, we will have, they will be school safety officers, they'll be called school resource officers, but that is one and the same. These are trained, licensed, just like the sheriff's office deputies. Then you have guardians. The trained officers, SSOs, SROs, have arrest powers. They are trained. They're like the sheriff's office deputies. Same thing. So we're not talking mall cops. The guardians do not have arrest powers. This is what we did after the Parkland shooting and the legislature put in the new legislation. We did this because we, in past years, we had to, we used to have school resource officers in the high school and junior high. Because of budgetary, the money kept going up, we had to eliminate the junior high. That's scary. So what we did, we implemented the guardian program after Parkland. We have guardians in the elementary schools now, today, because we could not afford to put a school resource officer in every school. We are paying $101,000 a person for a SSO equals SRO. The other counties in Florida 
average around sixty-five to seventy thousand. In some districts, they don't pay anything. The county commission budget helps out. In years past, the sheriff's office, I mean the county commission, used to help us out. Once we got the guardian program in and there was some money that came from the state that helped us with that, we implemented that guardian program because we didn't want our even our elementary schools not to have a presence there. So we, over the years, have done the best we could with the money that we had. Now money, um, I know you think, well, so you're trying to save some money. Well, it's the first time in my existence we've been criticized for trying to save money. But if we can save the money and we have trained officers in our schools, we must look at that. Um, I'm, I'm just very concerned that we so need to we get know. more information out to the public and to you. And we are going to try as we can to answer, I wrote down some concerns that you had as, as the different speakers were speaking, and we certainly, I will do my best to work with the superintendent to make sure that all of these concerns and questions are answered because you deserve to have an answer. Um, I've been criticized because, uh, you know, they said, well, you didn't allow the sheriff to speak at the last meeting. Well, at least twice or three times I said, if anyone would like to speak to the board, please fill out a card. The sheriff sat in the back left corner and never moved the whole night. I had hoped he would. Um, if Ms. Gilhausen felt that she would like for the sheriff to speak, all she had to do was say, Madam Chairman, I would like for the sheriff to make a few comments. I certainly would have said, of course. Uh, the opportunity was there. I really had hoped that he would get up and say a few words. I want to work with the sheriff's office, and uh, I, I have to trust that he told me that he would work with us. I, I would, had he sharpened his pencil a little, um, I had told him that I certainly am open to discussion, sit down and talk to him, have a cup of coffee or a big gulp, as he says. I mean, we want to work with these other agencies, but we're in a situation that we have, the other thing you don't understand, you're saying today don't vote for this, this, that. This item was voted on at the last board meeting. It's already been voted on. This is a, a resolution to go to the, to the state. Do you have any more comments about the resolution? No, ma'am, to the chair, you know, when the board decided to, to vote on last, in the last meeting in, um, in January, this is just the next step to comply with the board's wishes to push us to, um, to initiate the police department. As superintendent of schools, my job is to take direction from the board and to implement. I cannot sit on the sidelines and wait. I have to act. I have to move. And this is a step in the, in the direction to, to fulfill the requirements based upon me as superintendent in order to create uh, this police department with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. Okay. Um, I'll think of something else that I meant to say when it's over, but I'll, we'll all be outside after this meeting. Is, it, is there any more discussion before we vote? Okay, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed say no. No. Motion carries four to one with Ms. Gilhouse in dissenting. Uh, and uh, Superintendent comments? Any further comments? No, ma'am. I will, through the chair, will address. Uh, uh, I have a couple minutes outside to address any mm -hmm. parents and constituents that want to talk to, to me to address any concerns. I will also be at 12 o'clock to, um, to address this pressing issue within our community and uh, for a uh, live press conference as well. Okay. Any more comments? It's adjourned.